hi my people welcome back to my channel thank you for the love that you're showing me thank you for the family of subscribers we are growing thank you so so much and i'm so glad to have you on board so today we are going to do an interesting video it's much more different from the serious ones that we've been having so today i'm just i did actually i did a q a on instagram and i asked you guys please tell me some of your grandma tells that people were telling you when you're pregnant tell me some of those things that people tell you when you're pregnant because you know we live in the african society and you're told a lot when you're pregnant in fact from the time you you get married up to when now you're pregnant and you're giving birth there's also all this meets in the african society so today just let us just have a good laugh it's nothing serious so i'll start by number one one of the myths that i've seen people saying having too much sex when pregnant makes the baby look white really guys <laughs> okay so <laughs> someone told me that oh they saw a baby who was born and then the parents were having too much sex and then it seems like the sperm of the father was penetrating through the placenta apparently and it goes to the baby and then it makes the baby white a big myth so let me tell you a secret about that whitish stuff that a baby is born with that whitish stuff there's a scientific name i don't want to say it but it's called vernix anyway it's called vernix so it has a function the function is just to protect the baby and then it also just preserves heat on the baby when the baby is being born such that the baby is not born and then when they're coming out of the world they feel so like cold yeah and then it also just acts as a moisturizer and helps the process of <coughs> sorry it helps in the process of vaginal delivery so <coughs> do not i repeat do not look at someone's child and then you're looking at them like hmm, you people used to have too much sex when you're pregnant it doesn't make sense that is a myth next time someone tells them that refer them to this channel so that they learn number two taking fish cuts the supply of milk really is there a connection between fish and milk taking fish and milk milk production no that is a myth and one thing that i'll just like to tell you because i've also had myths about fish that some people are telling me that if you're pregnant especially in the Luya community you're told not to take fish that is fish is a good source of omega-3 fish is a good source of protein and pregnant mothers you need omega-3 for your baby you need protein for your developing baby so please make sure you take fish but there's some types of fish i'll put them here they usually contain a high level of mercury so they're prone to let me just say they're prone to absorbing mercury so when someone is pregnant and then they take them it can lead to mercury poisoning maybe that's why some people in some other countries at all to cut down on fish when they're pregnant but generally fish is not bad you eat as much fish fish sorry you eat as much fish as possible so that <laughs> you can be able to help your baby to grow with the necessary vitamins and minerals number three Pineapples can cause miscarriages or induce labor. Actually, I've had this talk with so many people who've been pregnant and they're telling me towards the end of the last trimester, they usually take pineapples in order to ripen the cervix in order to help in delivery. So guys, this one now you'll help me out. Any nurse, please help me out. But I think it cannot induce a miscarriage that is my thought i think taking pineapples is good because i've had people who've been taking pineapples when they're pregnant and no miscarriage at all so if you've taken pineapples when you're pregnant and you've not had a miscarriage or just to help to induce labor please let me know in the comment section let us interact thank you then um the next one you can't have a vaginal delivery after a c-section actually this is this happens to most people who have a c-section they come and ask will i be able to deliver next time normally yes it's possible it depends and it's good you go to a good gynecologist so that they'll be able to guide you but yes i've seen seen in i've seen cases whereby or scenarios whereby someone has given birth maybe their first birth was by via a c-section then the next one is vaginal so it's very possible it's not a myth it's possible then different sex positions influence the baby's gender hey you guys 
so let me be a little bit cheeky so someone told me when you do doggy style <laughs> this is not for under 18 if you do doggy style and then it gives maximum penetration and then you get a baby girl hmm really and then if you want to get a baby boy i don't know you do missionary or something of the sort guys does that really determine that what determines the sex of the baby or the gender of the baby is the male and female chromosomes the x and y chromosomes and it's actually the dad who determines the gender which brings to me which brings me to this point of the guy is telling the ladies maybe we una nizalia to us chana we una nizalia to avlana dude it's your sperm that is determining the type of child that you're supposed to get it's not the lady because ladies have two chromosomes which is xx and then the guys have x and y so it's the y that determines whether you're going to have a baby or the x in the male that determines whether you're having to get a baby boy or a baby girl so yeah I hope I've put that clear about the sex positions. Let me know if you've ever maybe had sex in a, in a certain position you are told and then you conceived. Well, let me know. But to me, it's just a myth. Then a little alcohol won't hurt. Really? So I think I should do a video on alcohol and pregnancy because the new mothers these days, because I know these days ladies drink like their father's kitambo. So someone drowns a lot of vodka a lot of beer and everything so that and then they say it's not really bad for your health alcohol is really bad first of all to your health and to the health of your child so you're putting your baby at risk and you know these effects come way later in life the effects of alcohol on the baby you might not see them right now but you'll see them as your baby is developing your baby will be very slow your baby will have issues with your the brain development and trust me that baby will blame you so instead of saying a little alcohol won't hurt please for crying out loud it's just nine months stop the alcohol after that you can proceed with whatever you want to do but please have your child's interest at heart next one not shaving the hair of newborn makes them thin actually i'm a lawyer and in our society they always say i don't know if it's in other communities you can leave it in the comment section they always say that once a baby is born you're supposed to take them to the grandmother so that they can shave them so that i don't know what the meaning of that is but someone said also someone said when you don't cut the hair of the baby the baby will be very thin what is the connection between the hair of your baby and the baby being thin that is just a myth it doesn't make sense so if you don't want to cut your hair well and good because i know some people who've not cut the hair and the baby's hair has grown and the baby's hair is flourishing it's even much more better than some of us whose hairs were cut so it's a myth yeah then next one sleeping a lot will make your baby lazy really <laughs> so someone someone actually told me that the activity that you do determines uh, how active your baby will be. I don't think when you see, because sometimes when you're pregnant, you tend to get very tired. And when you sleep a lot, I think it will just affect you when you're delivering, but it will not affect the baby. But it's good to be active. It's good to exercise a little bit when you're pregnant. Don't be so, don't be that person who's so caught up and you're so tired, you're so lazy, you can't even exercise. You will have problems. You will not dilate, you will remain at 2 centimeters for how many hours? 48 hours and then you start saying nas, nas, nas and it's all your fault so make sure you exercise. Next, uh, eating oranges or drinking coke will make the baby have jaundice or will bleach the baby. Guys, what is this that you are practicing? So I don't think, I think this is a myth because I know someone who was pregnant, ate oranges, drank coca-cola and the baby came out dark skin. So there's no relationship between those two. So that's a myth. Then if you hate your husband, it's a boy. If you love him, it's a girl. Really guys? Um, well, sometimes it, okay. Well, sometimes I've seen it happens that when the mother is carrying a boy, they tend to maybe hate the husband. And when they're carrying a girl, they really love the husband. I have a friend who actually did that and it's, it's the same exact thing. So. I don't know maybe it's just the oedipus complex or maybe it's just the hormones of the mother that just change because sometimes you can love your husband sometimes and something small and then because you're pregnant 
you just blow up in a mood so yeah if you hated your husband if you hated your boyfriend or your baby daddy <laughs> let me know in the comment section and the gender of the baby that you then conceive. if a baby sits on the right side it's a girl if it's on the left side is a boy wait what okay i didn't know so i've seen this argument that people say yeah my baby sat on the right side i don't know how that is okay i'm never been pregnant so i really don't know right side left side how your baby sits but yeah if you've had this experience also let me know but to me it's a myth then um the next one if you dream of snakes and lizards you get a boy if you dream of fish it's a girl hey you guys what is the correlation? What is the relationship between lizards, snakes, and the gender of your baby? The gender of your baby is just the X and Y chromosome, period. Myth. Next, if you have a heart burn, <laughs> this one is very funny. If you have a heart burn, the baby will have a lot of hair. Guys, what the hell is going on here? What is the relationship between hyperacidity and hair? Doesn't make sense. In fact, my mother had a lot of hyperacidity and little kind of nyole moja. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense. I make sense. It's a myth for crying out loud. And mommy, I'm sorry if you watch this, I'm not trying to throw any shade. Yeah. So a heartburn is basically just caused because okay. A heartburn comes about in pregnancy because of the developing fetus, so they tend to press on the stomach and then now you have a lot of acid reflux because the baby is expanding, so it's pressing on the organ, so just that acid reflux is a, because of the pressure and it, it tends to go away after someone has delivered. The best thing is you just take anti-acids, you'll be fine. No hair relation, nothing. It's a Then the next one. Mm. Taking paper will burn your baby. Really? There's usually this placenta, the placenta barrier that usually there's exchange of nutrients between the mother and the child. So really, paper really, will it really just go and burn your baby like that? No. But I'll say avoid spicy foods because it can trigger heartburn. That's the only reason, not because it will burn your baby. Come on, look at Indians. They eat a lot of spicy foods, whether they're pregnant or not. But do they burn their babies? No, so it's a myth. Then the next one, if you eat okra or murenda, you will give birth easily. Guys, you know what murenda is? Me and my lawyer, I really love murenda. It's that vegetable that usually looks like slimy. So someone is assuming if they eat a lot of it, they'll give birth easily. Really, is that murenda coming from your stomach and then it goes down to your vagina in order to lubricate it? Really, guys, that's really a myth. And lawyers, please stop telling your wives to do that so that they can give birth easily. In fact, I have a relative of mine who ate murenda because of that. And then they ended up getting a C-section. They didn't give birth easily. So... It has nothing to do with the dilation of your cervix when you're getting when you're like giving and then um having sex frequently is a slabber this is the last one and i'm so shocked how true is that okay for what i know is i'm not sure about labor but when you're doing when you're actually in labor do you even have the time to have sex or is did this mean that when you have frequent sex now maybe it will dilate and then you'll ease labor really i don't think so because the vagina basically it's a muscle it uh, contracts and expands that's why it can expand to even 10 centimeters in order to allow your baby to pass through and then after that it goes back to normal so having frequent sex really i don't think it has anything to do with easing labor but if you've experienced that well, you might as well let me know in the so, comments. Section. I hope you've had a good laugh. If you have any other myths, misconceptions, any other thing you've had, please let me know in the comment section. Then I'll be able to react to that. Thank you. And yeah, let me see you in the next video. Please give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel because we are growing. Share this video out so that everyone might know those myths and stop believing that. So... Thank you so much. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.